CNS Cursus. We only said we wanted to mark that one. We didn't mark every single page. Nullum, though, we see it on all these different pages, lorem ipsum. And so each one of these things is now indexed that we can, of course, if you, you know, if you, if you look at this and we select it, notice it's now like our table index. So it tells us which pages everything is on and, you know, all the things that we can do there. And, of course, if we say we want to, you know, take this and uh, you know, do a hard, uh, hard page break here, we'll do a control enter. And then right here at the, you know, I can say that uh, this is going to be actually an index. Now watch this. Now notice this is the index, right? Now if I go up here and I select over here and under my references and I update my table and update my entire table now what's going to happen sure enough now the index is marked and so if I need to I can hit control enter and I can jump right to my index pretty neat and so this is how we can use all of our indexing for pu putting in the different pages and showing where all of these particular items are and then of course our table of contents which allow us to go there and say wow okay now we we know exactly where to navigate within our document one last thing to show you here of course is if I want to do cross-referencing well what what's cross-referencing do for me well a lot of times you might have certain things that are uh, you know not really uh, you know in there someone might say well I want to find out about lorem uh, dipsum instead of lorem ipsum well it's the same thing so you could put something in lorem dipsum or choose something else and then cross-reference it to something here that makes it another index entry so let's go back up here and we'll uh, go to the top here and we'll say that uh, this word, particular word, we're going to cross-reference with lorem ipsum. So I select it, same thing, mark entry, etiam. I'm going to do a cross-reference and it's going to say, well, what do you want it to do? Now, anytime it sees this, down in the index, it's going to say you want to see whatever it is, whatever reference or the cross-reference. So in this case, we could say uh, lorem ipsum. Okay. So now we can go ahead and do that. Now when I go ahead and mark this, watch what happens. It changes the font. Let me move this right here. Now it says, all right, now we're going to say this is an uh, index entry for etiam. That, it, you know, got the little slash T for the tab. And it says C lorem ipsum is what it's going to be typed there. Now what I do is I go ahead and hit close. We'll go ahead and turn off this. Scroll down here, and I'll go down to my index, and hey, wait a minute, where is it? Well, again, if you select this, go to References, and if you come up here, I can update my index. Boom, there it is. Now it says Etium C Lorem Ipsum. So that's how we can use cross-referencing to help people find particular pieces of information or point them in the right direction within our documents. Believe you me, whenever you have those long documents, it's going to be great when you're able to create things like a table of contents to help you find the certain things that you're looking for, especially if you're somebody that's uh, just picking up this doc Word document and going, hey, where in the heck do I find out about the Middle Ages in the history of instruments? Also, if you have figures, if you want to find that picture of Antonio Stradivari, you can do that. We also took a look at the very beginning of how indexing can help us find the places in a document and then link to that there at the at the end and tell people like hey you want to talk about this word or this particular thing or format or whatever it is you can go to this particular page and then of course cross-referencing maybe you don't want to specifically put down a page number but instead you want to reference something else in the index cross-references can help you out now in the next nugget video we're going to take a look at endnotes footnotes and also even talk briefly about the table of authorities I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing. Microsoft Word 2007, Index and Referencing Part 2. You know, as an author, I've actually written a few books. I can't tell you how much it irks me to see people go out and write articles and other books and not give credit for where they get certain information. That's why endnotes, footnotes, and most importantly, bibliographies and works cited are very important. So we're going to show you how you can do that here in this Nugget video.
Have you ever been producing like a document and you want to make a comment based on, well, I agree with this, or, oh, you might not know this about this, but you might want to add this information? That's what footnotes and endnotes allow us to do. Footnotes, as we'll see at the end of the page, endnotes at the end of the document or at the end of the section. Source Manager, we're going to take a look, is now how we can take all the works of the, all the, the books and the journals and the TV shows and everything that we cite in our documents, we can now control in our Source Manager and then from from that, we can then create the bibliography. In our last Nugget video, we had taken a look at some of the reference capabilities that we have, and we went ahead and utilized those here. So if you remember back here, we got our table of contents set up here on our history of instruments. I went ahead and saved all that into outline two. And then if we you know, scroll down here, we can see that we have, of course, now our uh, figures, and then we had our uh, figure table of figures and then we down here we have our index at the very end so we've already done that but there's oh so much more that we can do on our documents so we'll go ahead and come over here to references the two that we didn't really uh, talk about too much are the footnotes and the citations and bibliography now these are two different ways for you to reference people or works that you have taken material from now footnotes are usually good when you want to maybe explain something a little bit more or maybe add a little side note a footnote or an end note some people though also use these in the case of saying well you know Bob Jones said this or I saw this on TV somewhere well that's fine and that works but really where you really want to be technical and in the days and ages I mean we've all seen the TV and the news where people are like yeah I made this up all my myself and then you guys have written these great books and then you find out well no it was stolen from somebody else so you always want to make sure that you give citations for people that you quote and of course any bibliography if you studied somebody's material you're gonna to want to do that so let's start off with the simple one and that's footnotes and this is where maybe you're just doing a simple report on the history of instruments and you want to add some footnotes so for example if I come down here and uh, we're back here in the Middle Ages and we're taking a look at uh, Antonio Stradivari and let's say that you know right here in this sentence right here uh, we made a we made a point about Antonio Stradivari and, and what he did so what we can do is I can go to the very end of here and I can add either a footnote now the footnote will drop down at the end of the page or an end note which will go all the way to the end if you notice it'll say to all the end of the all the way at the end of the document now it just depends on how you want to do it if you have a small report you might want to use end notes if you have sections of your text chapters you might want to put the footnotes at the end uh, of that so you know that this is probably a, a good way to go so now what we're going to do or for the footnotes I should say so now what I'm going to do is let's, let's go ahead and do a footnote all right well, well we're gonna go ahead and insert a footnote right here now what it does is notice it automatically came down here and it inserted the one now if I scroll back up here you'll notice it says at the end of this sentence let's say we made a little comment it says there's a footnote here so I'm gonna come down here and say Antonio Stradivari studied under many different teachers some say that he brought the best out of all of them so okay now I've added this quote or this little note this is a footnote right so now what happens is if you, if you click on up here and I scroll up you can see that here is this quote now if I take my notice it says oh you've got a footnote when you when you roll over this and it turns on the tooltips it's gonna tell you that hey Antonio Stradivari studied under many different teachers some say that he brought out the best out of all of them this is great for your online electronic version but again if you print this if we come down to here this is where it's going to appear now here's the cool thing if I did maybe did something else and maybe at the end of this little sentence here where Morbi Metis Odeo yeah I know I understand I apologize I had to use the lorem ipsum generator so I didn't have to type all this text but at the end of this one I might want to talk a little bit about the wood a lot of people believe it was the way that Stradivari um, treated the wood so now I can add another footnote so I can go ahead and click insert footnote and notice it automatically numbers my footnotes that was number one this is number two and I'm gonna say well uh, the wood that was used on his instruments is very specially treated 
No one knows the secret. Okay, so now we got another little uh, footnote here. And again, if I come back up here, and now I've got one, you can see the little superscript. And now down here, if I roll it over, it's going to also show really quickly as a part of a tooltip. And of course, you can turn that on and off as part of your personal preferences in Word 2007, but it enables you to see that. So that is a footnote. Now you can of course insert an end note somewhere. Let's say we want to go ahead and say that the that the very end of this about uh, the you know the Renaissance and the masters like Antonio Stradivari, we want to put an end note. So if I go here and I insert an end note, watch what happens. It drops it all the way down here to the very end. Here's my index down here, and I can type in something that says Antonio Stradivari is only one of many masters during this time. So I'm adding all this information here for my footnotes. And now, so now if I scroll back up all the way back to the masters here, um, you'll see that unlike the one, the two, now I get an end note. I have a little end note that says the little uh, Roman, little, uh, little I right there. Now, someone might say, Chris, what if I don't want to use the ones and the twos in this? How can I do that? Well, as usual, take a look. My footnote and endnotes do have a dialog box. So if I click here, here is where I can say, well, my endnotes go at the end of a document. I can also put them at the end of a section. This is really good for um, uh, your chapters. So that way, endnotes at the end of each chapter, if that's how you want to end it up. Notice the number format. I can change that. It doesn't have to be the uh, little small uh, number format like this. I can go and say, well, no, I want it like with special notes like this and I want to or I want to use numbers or I want to use letters I can do that where do you want it to start at I can use a custom mark I can go and use any of the symbols that I have and the numbering I can make it continuous or I can restart it each section so if I'm doing chapters this is great because that means that at the end of each section or chapter it'll start off again at the beginning and that way you know you can apply changes only to a section if you want or you can go to the whole entire do document now this of course is important like we said, if you want to review it, go back to the nugget where we talk about paragraph formatting and page formatting, so that way you can see the differences between paragraph formatting, page formatting, and section formatting. That's where this comes into. Of course, footnotes, we can change that whether they appear at the bottom of the page, you want them right below the text, you can do that. Um, uh, you can convert all your footnotes to whatever changes that you have. You can convert them over to other things, so you have some selections right here. So I, of course, can insert a new endnote, I can cancel, or I can apply any changes that are made. Of course, I'll go ahead and cancel because I've already had them set up. So this is footnotes. These are really good for just little notes that you have. You can also do small citations and uh, make little notes like, you know, I was watching this on NBC. I don't recall the name of the show, but it had uh, the, you know, the Incredible Hulk on it or something. I don't know. But you can make those little notes so that way people can, maybe you don't want to insert it as part of the main body of text. You can add a little th uh, little comment based upon this. Okay? So that's the footnotes. Now, where it becomes serious, like we said, is when we start talking about the citations and bibliography. A lot of this is really new in Word 2007. It's called something called the Source Manager. And what this allows you to do is keep track of all your sources that you use when you're researching the document, and then you can reference them in a format that's approved by, let's say, the American Publishers Association, or you can go by the Chicago Manual of Style, uh, you can do GB7714, which I have no idea, the International Organization of Standards, ISO 690, uh, you know, there's, there's different uh, organizations and ways and styles styles that you need to do. Uh, so let's say that you wanted to do this in the Chicago Manual of Style. So you can do that. And then what you might want to do is manage the sources because you can insert citations. For example, let's come down here and let's say that we're talking about uh, the, the modern times and we're talking about the Big Band era and we're talking about Glenn Miller and let's say that right here I'm going to put a quote mark next to this, um, this sentence, uh, the uh, Nuke Ipsum. And uh, all the way down to right about here was a quote. 
that was made by a book that I read by James Conrad all about the history of musical instruments and about how much he really liked them. So what I can do is I can insert a source right here that will show up as well as later on when I build a bibliography where a or, or works cited that it'll actually build it for me that's pretty cool so what I can do is number one is I can insert a citation or if I don't have any I can go over here to manage sources now I'm gonna do this one first so I'll click on manage sources and it brings up the source manager dialog box and you can see that one of the